Hi, I'm David, and welcome to the Data Source Rex podcast, where we interview data visualization experts and get to know them and their data visitors that little bit better. By the end, you should learn new skills and get inspired to enhance your own data viz game. Today's guest is Lorna Eden, who is a Tableau ambassador, co-lead of Workout Wednesday, and also co-lead of Tableau Tip Tuesday. So it's very impressive. Welcome, Lorna. Hi, thank you for having hey. me on, David. Cool. No, my, my pleasure. Thanks for coming. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to cover here. So just for those of you who are, uh, who are new to the show, um, we are going to spend the first half of the podcast just going over a viz Lorna's made. Uh, this is a really cool one. I'm, I'm really eager to understand how, how she built this one. Uh, so we'll get inspired about her approaches, techniques. Uh, and then in the second half, we're going to just throw some rapid fire questions at her just to kind of get to understand the person behind the business <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and so just for those of you who are on the audio podcast, uh, the link to the viz and or everything else we talk about will be in the show notes below. Um, and I'll try and be as more visually descriptive uh, with my words uh, as possible for those people. So, okay, great. So yeah, thank you again, Lorna, for coming on the viz. I'm going to bring up your the viz we're going to talk about today. And this is to do with uh, the Iron Viz competition. Is that correct? Around farming? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. And what I notice here is it's not your typical your typical viz, which I think is awesome. It's kind of like a, like a survey stroke game, like where the choices I'm about to make, which I'll do whilst you're talking, um, will lead to different responses inside of the viz. Is that a fair? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I wanted to create that sort of effect because of the the data set itself. I didn't really know what to do with it. Mm. But no, it's, it's brilliant. I've I just uh, had a run through before we talked, and I've learned quite a bit about farming in, in the US. So uh, I'll I'll go through and, and fill it out again, so our viewers can see the stuff. But um, let's let's start off with the first question, though. Uh, whilst I'm doing that. Um, what was the inspiration for this viz? Obviously, uh, the data was provided by Tableau for the Iron Viz competition, but um, what inspired you to approach it this way? Um, so it was really a work project, so I can't really talk too much about the work project, but oh. the way that um, the work project was working is that we've got sort of like a quiz and then you get a profile at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to show off the new features of set actions and how you could use it instead of using slider parameters. So right. I just wanted to be able to select an, an answer to the question and then be able to provide a profile at the end. So that was kind of the, the, the idea around it. Okay, cool. No, it's, and it's really fascinating because um, as, so I've just filled out the first round and I've answered a few questions and it looks like uh, based on my answers, yeah, it's telling me if, if I'm above or below the percentages. Uh, of like the average um, stats for America or or, the, or county I'm looking at, and um, I just I don't know why I did this, but I, I just found out that Queens in New York doesn't have any farms, <laughs> which oh, is really? probably not, probably not surprising because <laughs> it's sitting in an urban city. But it's good to see that data's accurate and stuff. But uh, but that's that's really awesome. So um, just a, a question. So with that, is it driven? Did you mention it's driven by parameters, or is there something more special? Um, because it seems so to remember. What I've chosen. Yeah, so this is driven by set actions. Ah, so set it's, actions. Yeah, so I've basically created every question is a new set. Mm -hmm. So, and then it's every question is also a set action. So then whenever you're selecting that option, it's basically a true false on the other sheets, ah. depending on what you've selected. I see, I see. So that kind of sticks them. So rather than you making however many different combinations there are, you've just, yeah, used that true false to like, once it's yep. activated, it's, it sticks there and persists throughout all the visas you, you guide people through with the yep. buttons. I see, yep. I see. Oh, that's really smart. Okay. So, um, and I guess with uh, the, uh, like, when, when I click next, it's you using those, that new feature in Tableau, the, the buttons, which let you jump to another uh, jump worksheet. To another sheet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, they, implemented that in um 183 i think it was with buttons mm. um so that you can implement your own sheet uh, your own actual image um and then you can go from that button to the uh, next dashboard nice no i like that that's a good use of that feature it kind of flows naturally in the way you've placed it like i answer all the questions and then i just know where it says next but it's just very intuitive like to do that which is great and um 
I just, I love it as an option to have internet on the farm. Of course, I'm going to say yes to that. <laughs> I mean, um, some people might want to not have internet. Yeah, so. that's just true. You get away from it all. Um, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> but again, this is such a great biz because it's kind of making me, I'm like, I'm invested in this data. Like, uh, I'm, sure, I'm not sure, if, I'm sure it was a conscious choice by you, but like me filling out the answers makes me actually want to see where I stack versus the rest of the country or the county I'm in. So it's, a really cool thing rather than just throwing up numbers it's like oh how am i where, where am i re- like in relation to stuff it's a great tactic yeah it's that it's that personal interaction with the viz isn't it like people get emotionally involved in in some things and and that, that that's what i wanted to be able to do with this one is give them the option to mm-hmm. get invested in the data set because it was quite a difficult data set to get your head around um yeah. so it's quite nice to just be able to let people explore what their options would be hmm. but I, but i like it. it's still curated because um because you, if you're not like just giving them everything all at once you're actually breaking it up and, and making it digestible which is which is really cool too so i think that's that's a good tactic as well and i just learned two new facts thanks to your biz um more i thought uh, farms with the internet would be in a minority but it looks like 70 percent of farms do have internet which is cool yeah. And uh, also the chemical thing, I was surprised by that. Twenty only twenty four percent of counties use chemicals. I thought it'd be way higher. So it's yeah, really fascinating. And again, I I don't know anything about farming, but your viz is doing a great job in infor- informing a a person who had zero knowledge and now getting me up up in the ranks of knowledge. So I'm loving this. This is really fun. <laughs> um, but cool. but before I get too distracted, I should ask <laughs> you another question. <laughs> um, I, I guess. Um, Instead of normally, I would ask people how they collected the data, but it seems like um, it was kind of uh, a standard that everyone had. So I'd ask more: How did you go about manipulating it so that it could be presented in this way? You've already mentioned set actions, but like, is there a certain yeah. way you structured it? Did you have to duplicate data sets so they didn't interfere with each um, other? So the way Tableau provided the data set was very messy. Um, so oh. we actually had we had one Excel workbook that had I think six tabs and instead of the headers being normal headers they Mm. were reference points so you had to then cross reference that with another tab which had a full list of all of the actual headers so it was like a code Mm. and then the headers on one tab and then on the other tab it was just the code across the top um so it kind of needed a lot of cleaning before you could even do anything with it um so yeah that was that was the first task. Um, mm. I did use Altwix for it because I thought it would be a lot easier. Um, but I think you should be able to use Tableau Prep to be able to do it as well. Yeah, that's fair. I, um, I it's, it's a pretty good tool. For, I haven't actually used Altwix myself, but um, I've heard good things about Tableau Prep as well. I'm keen to learn how to use that. And those use cases you just described, looks like it should be able to handle that. Yeah, um, and they've just dropped a new version of Tableau Prep as well, I think, um, which allows you to move the tools around, which is quite nice. Oh, amazing, amazing. And um, I think you touch upon a great point uh, just by cleaning the data, and that's such a valuable task in itself because I think a lot of companies or organizations go, yeah, look, the data's there, it's fine, people will figure it out. But often they don't because it's such hard work and there's such a yeah. value in the way people like you um, approach this and add for data by actually making it engaging and accessible and and turning it from data into insights and this is an amazing example of what you know of this with your viz so i think often people forget that so i appreciate all those hours you've spent probably behind the scenes making this data good (laughs) yeah and um i think um i made it um accessible for other people as well so um they they could use the the clean version i offered it out to Ah. people to say that the clean version's there if you want it. Um, hmm. So it's just easier for people to actually get on with iInvis as well. And I'm sure other people in the community did that. Oh, that's that's really generous. And that's um, a common theme I, we've seen on this podcast with, with the Tableau and DataViz communities. Everyone's just really nice <laughs> and generous. Like <laughs> there's none of this like, it's my idea, go away. It's like, oh, I've done this thing. Here's, you know, let me share my knowledge or my hard work. And I think that's, again, really cool. And it's great to hear it you're contributing to that too. So I hope you benefited some people so they didn't have to spend just as much time as you did on that data. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, that's great. Um, ah, so here's, here's probably the meat of the question. How did you go about 
the approach of creating this? Did you have to like map out? Did you draw stuff? Did you map it out on paper? Like, okay, so they click here and it makes these things happen. Or was it a bit more organic? Um, love to know your um, process. Yeah. So um, I, being part of the data school, uh, they tried to teach us to um, make sure we draw before we actually viz anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I very rarely do that. But once I have an idea in my head, I do need to get it down onto paper. Mm. Um, so on my I Invis European one, um, I actually drew it on my iPad so that I had it down on paper and it pretty much looked identical to the the final viz that I did. Oh, um, nice. But for this one, um, we did um, a wireframing and like process flow workshop at, at work. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of used post-it notes to do that. In fact, they are here. Oh, um, I just baked a big screen. Oh, wow. That's so awesome. So I've literally got, so I stuck them on my wall mm. and um, I had like the, the front dashboard and then the round one. Wow. That's, and that's then amazing. I just ca- I carried on. Um, I just built the whole process flow on my wall so that I could see, okay, well, what needs to link to where and, and what else do I need to do? And, mm. and that kind of formed the basis of like the skeleton as such. Um, so, oh, yeah. Wow. That's really cool. And I, I guess, yeah, post-it notes are a great idea because if something doesn't fit, I guess you just remove it or move it into a better position. Um, yeah exactly that that's yeah. the good thing about getting it down on paper is that you're not precious over it so you can just move it around and and just put it in the right place mm. yeah and, and get a good idea if it just sits well or fits well and, and looks good so that's yeah that's yeah that's a cool idea i need to leverage post-it notes a bit more i think in some of my future visits because it's i think I, I get too excited i'm like oh I'll put this here put this here and but you're right you get a bit committed and then you're like, oh, I don't want to move that. I've just spent all this time resizing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's that's a really good point. I, think I, I can definitely learn from that. <laughs> and hopefully other people can too. Um, <laughs> but that's cool. So I guess so you got the structure. And then did you think about the narrative? Did, did you try and group up? It seems like there's certain groupings of things. You f- I think first off you focus on location. And then I think round three was about crops and four was about animals. Um, is that kind yeah. of how you approached it? Yeah, so I kind of, I, I basically printed off all of the questions. I think there was 200 of them. Um, so Ooh. I printed them off on an A4 sheet of paper, well, mm. two or three A4s. And um, I basically just um, went through them and said, do I want to ask this sort of question or do I not? Um, and then I just highlighted the ones that I wanted. And then in my Alteryx workflow, that's where mm. I got rid of the ones I didn't want and just kept the ones that I needed for my viz because otherwise it would have been a lot of data points and yeah. it was just easier working with a smaller data set. No, no, that makes sense. And, I, and uh, I'm not sure if this is how you approach it too, but I love how you get people after each round to go back to the game board. So even when you have all these questions, you give people a sense of progression as there's a grid which is empty to start with, but as we keep going through each of the question rounds, they fill up with our responses. Um, was that a conscious choice to give people that sense of progress as they go through to keep going? Yeah, so I wanted to just make sure that people knew that their choices were meaning something in the end. So I mm. wanted to give them that inspiration to keep going through to see what their final game board would look like. So once mm. you get through round one, you kind of think, oh, what, what's what's next? And, and just keep going through with that. Um, so... Yeah, that's kind of why I did it in between each after Did You mm. Know, so that people could see their progression. No, that's that's amazing because there's, I mean, the the word filling out or the term filling out questionnaires doesn't normally excite people, but this is actually, you're making it fun. And it's quite rare. So I, I, that's a great idea. You've, you've managed to make the impossible happen. You've made a questionnaire <laughs> fun <laughs> and engaging. Yeah. So, but that's, but, that's, but that's cool though. Again, it just goes to show like a good UX approach and, and workflow. Uh, and, and data visualizations along the way can really help with that. So it's it's cool to see you've actually applied a lot of this to this and made something typically boring, yeah, really interesting. So that's, yeah, this is cool. I'm going to have to um, see how I can put, bring this back into my day job. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it? It's trying to bring it back into the day job now, mm. um, which I'm trying to do with one of the products that we're working on. Um, nice. So hopefully. 
That'll yeah, be nice. fingers crossed. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, okay, what do we got next? Uh, question. Oh, so I, I guess I've, I may have stolen some of your thunder, but I was just excited about some of the insights I found. But um, what, what were you personally, what were some of the best insights you found when you were exploring this data? Yeah, so for me, the best insight uh, wasn't what um, I found. It was seeing what people said about the actual viz and like you've said about the learning along the way. So it's it's not about me learning from the data set because I didn't, well, I did fill it out once, um, mm. but like it was mainly about how um, the person that was filling it out learned their journey and um, understood the, the farm that they wanted to be on. Um, so, yeah, right. it was more about the, the user rather than the myself getting the insights. Uh, okay, and that's that's kind of smart actually, because um, you have all this data, and you've you've managed to build a process or a workflow which scales analysis, um, and you can kind of get those insights. Because I I've just completed the quiz, and I've seen you've got a button here which allows you to tweet um, your results, which is really smart. Um, using and it, do you instruct people to use a hashtag? Too, but yeah, correct? so um, once it once you click that button, it actually goes to a pre-formatted um, tweet. So it kind of gives you the option to say, oh, I completed this this iron farming with the hashtags already in there so oh. that I can track the hashtags as well. Wow. Okay. Well, you're gonna, I, I didn't click it before, but you're going to get a tweet from me now. So that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's, and, and is that a – I'm kind of curious. How did you manage to do that? Is it just a bit of custom – code or so um you there's a website that you can go on that creates your own tweet url um ah. so it'll automatically predetermine what tweet you want to say and then it'll mm -hmm. give you a url and then it's just a simple url action from tableau so once you click on the button it then takes you to the internet and right then your predetermined tweets already there wow that's very smart i like that it's um <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess rather than people going through all this and hitting that dead end, you've actually given them an outlet to be like, hey, look, I finished my journey. And it kind of, yeah. it's not its not like a, a disappointment. It's like a, they actually can share and prove they've done it rather than just the, the results just disappearing forever. So, Yeah, that was, that was my idea is that I wanted to people to share what they'd done and, and hopefully that people could compare um, the different types of farms that people wanted to live on mm. and just by using the image. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to go check out that hashtag later and see what other people did. That's uh, this is this is amazing. <laughs> this is great work. Um, perfect. Uh, okay, next question. Okay, so you've you've mentioned a few things you've done, but what was like the number one skill you've learned uh, by, by by building the spears? Um. Yeah. So the number one would have been the set actions to mm. make sure that I knew how they worked and um. Just in general, I did come across some issues with how I originally created them. Mm -hmm. um, but then once I'd got over that, um, I managed to recreate most of them and uh, work it out. So um, it's just a case of learning from your mistakes and making sure mm -hmm. that your set actions are working nicely. Um, but I did just recently put a blog out on how I use the set actions as buttons on my blog. So it's under ah. Tablet Tip Tuesday. Okay, cool. So yeah, here's here's the website or the post you've done. I'm just just looking at it now. So this is where so this is your own website where you share a lot of your process and Tableau skills. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, this is my uh, so I have different options on there, but um, the one that we focus on is the Tableau Tip Tuesday, and uh, that's mm -hmm. the one where I post most things to. Um, but this week, um, I decided to document my process on how I built the button the the hmm. set action buttons to use them as filters um so it gives you a nice little video and the actual viz to go through so that you can download it and have a play with it oh cool yeah i see that there that's okay that's great i'll and we'll be sure to put a link to that in the show notes too um again i i love this kind of stuff the tableau you know the community we're not just hoarding information we're actually sharing it like how you know, so other people can benefit and actually learn from this stuff. So thank you for doing that. that will be great. Hopefully other people will make some cool stuff using that. Yeah, hopefully yeah. it'd be nice for people to use the power of set actions. Yeah, because I, I find um, I, I've been using them a little bit and they're so powerful, but it's just I've, most people I speak to, they're like, 
set what now? And then you have to go and explain the possibilities they can drive. And I think cases like yours are just great because it's far better to show rather than tell, I think. So, yeah, this is a yeah, great... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, once people get their heads around them, it, the, the sky's the limit, as you're proving with this. So, yeah. yeah. And the new feature as well around parameter actions, they're even cooler. Mm. So, yeah, oh, the actions I mean, are the new. Nice. I haven't even looked at those yet. I need to need to get into that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, so just I'm just going to quickly, as we're talking, scroll to scroll through your Tableau public gallery. Um, you seem to have a lot of cool visitors. And I was just wondering, what project is next for you or what biz is next for you, uh, which we should um, get excited about? Yeah, so um, I'm guessing, I think the next IronViz feeder is announced soon. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be working towards that next. Um, but I do have a long list of projects that I really want to do, but mm. it's just finding the time and the balance. So I, I really like to spend my time helping with the Tableau Tip Tuesday, uh, Workout Wednesday. So it's just, again, finding that right balance in terms of how much personal visiting can I do mm. or sharing with the community. No, that's, that's, a, that's, that's very fair. I think you've got to strike a good work-life hobby balance. And I think if you're not spending time making visits with, by helping other people make visits, that's, that's definitely not a bad thing. So that's that's really cool. But um, I highly recommend anyone to go check out Lorna's gallery too. There's, there's a lot of cool things in here, especially her work on Workout Wednesday and, and Tableau Tip Tuesday. It's, um, yeah, oh man, I'm going to spend hours after this just looking through half these again. <laughs> this is great. Love it. Um, okay, cool. So no, that's, that's, that's cool. So um, I guess the big projects are ongoing ones. So Tableau Tip Tuesday yeah. and, and Workout Wednesday. And just, yeah, for those, definitely. just for people who aren't familiar, would you be able to describe quickly what those are? Yeah, of course. Um, so Tableau Tip Tuesday kind of gives it away in the name. Mm -hmm. um, but so myself and Andy Creeble, uh, we take it in turns every week and we release a tip um, via normally via a video um, mm -hmm. so that people can see our screens and see how we're actually creating that specific tip. So it gives them a new tip every week um to do with tableau so recently we've been focusing on the new parameter actions and set actions but sometimes we go a bit old school and on some of the things that people might forget um mm. so like all um formatting your workbook um just in one click and changing data sources and all sorts of like just mini things really yeah. um but yeah that's so that's work at tableau tip tuesday and workout mm -hmm. wednesday is kind of it pushes the the limits of your own Tableau knowledge. So we take it in turns. So there's four of us, myself, Anne Jackson, Curtis Harris, and Luke Stanky. Mm -hmm. um, and they we all create a one every four weeks, I think, I think it is. So right. we, we create a viz mm -hmm. that has sort of like a business purpose or something that you could hopefully take back to your own business and, and recreate but we essentially give them the viz and we give them right. a set of instructions so you kind of have to follow the you have to recreate the viz without cheating but using the requirements of the uh, viz itself okay. so yeah that's it, it's kind of a good one to follow if you want to push your own skills yeah, no, that's that's a great one. And it's kind of, again, it's applied learning. It's not just here's a load of theory, off you go. It's like, I think, yeah, it's a great way to get people to learn by doing. Uh, if you give yeah. them that, that kind of set of instructions, that's, I think, what makes a lot of the stronger community um, enhancement collaboration projects stand out. Those kind of ones where yeah, you give people a bit of a guide ra guardrail just to kind of help them get started and then so, like have a, um, a success state. So they know they've yeah. actually learned what you're teaching them. So yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, exactly. I am. Um, um, I mean, oh, oh no, sorry, you go. You go. <laughs> um, we we also like reference. Um, if we think that the the workout is quite hard, we kind of do give them hints along the way to specific blog posts that will help them build a certain element of the the workout Wednesday as well. Um, so we're not just cruel and we just leave <laughs> them to really difficult ones. We do hint and provide feedback to those that think uh, that have done the workout Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. And then we just say, oh, you might just need to change this a little bit to make it perfect. Oh, that's great. That's really lovely. Again, it's yeah, a little guiding nudge 
rather than go, just going, ha, ha, I couldn't figure that one out. Uh, it's like, yeah. that's, that's really inspiring and it's great for you guys to put that time in. I guess, yeah, you're paying it forward. So hopefully those people will teach others and keep it going. So that's, that's yeah. really inspiring. Great. So one more question in, in this uh, section before we move on to the rapid fire ones. Um, is there anything you'd like to promote or make other people aware of apart from the t- Tablet Tip Tuesday and Workout Wednesday we just talked about? Um, getting people involved within IronViz itself. So um, this year they had 75 entries, but we really want to push it up, um, especially mm. um, the lower diversity range as well. So mm. um, get more females involved, ethnic minorities as well, just to get more people involved within the IronViz community, um, especially um, to, to try and get people on stage as well um because at the minute it seems to be a male dominated environment Mm. um and we want to make sure that we get um recognition for the work that we're doing as well so let's get more people involved in iron um Mm -hmm. to help with that there's also um something called iron quest Ah, which sarah bartlett runs yes we Um, had her on the podcast a while back and it's, it's a great um program but just for those who haven't heard that would you be able to quickly describe what that is yeah of course so sarah bartlett runs it and um she gets guest hosts as well so what she does is she provides a topic which is the same sort of idea as iinviz and you then have a month to create this specific viz and then she provides feedback on what you could improve on or what she liked and stuff like that and um josh who's just won the latest iinviz Yes. He participated in Iron Quest first and right. then went on to win the first feeder. Wow, yeah. I um oh. I had him on the podcast a while back and it's yeah, he's he does good work too. It's it yeah. must be so hard to be a judge on that, choosing between all these great entries. It's I don't know how they do yeah, that. Yeah, um, I don't envy them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but you're saying so that's where he got his first taste and support um to yeah. help him. Yeah, so it was his first yeah. entry into Iron Visit itself, um, but he did do the Iron Quest beforehand. Um, so it kind of gave him that practice run through and, and the feedback that he needed to then create mm. the, the the winning Viz, essentially. Amazing. No, yeah. that's a great great thing to promote. It's, yeah, like uh, Iron Viz's feeders, they're not, they're not scary. And it sounds like it is support. So I guess, yeah, you, I guess making more people aware of it, like you said, but also, I guess, supporting... Uh, people who might not think they're they cut out for it and stuff like that or just a bit shy i think that's that's a great thing yeah. to promote and um, just yeah, to yeah, exactly. get more diversity which is yeah awesome. and i'm happy to help anybody who thinks that they want to enter iron viz if mm. they want any feedback on their viz then just drop me a line on twitter then i can definitely help and provide some feedback for that awesome and yeah all of lorna's uh, social media stuff will be down in the, the show notes and if you're watching the video it should be just over there uh underneath her head <laughs> floating through so yeah definitely get in touch that's that's a great thanks for offering that that's cool problem um, okay so um we've got into we're now going into the rapid fire questions so um i'm gonna just yeah throw several questions at you and Feel free to take as long or as little as you as you like to answer them. But um, I feel these are always a good way just to kind of get a bit more, a, bit, a little bit better understanding behind you and, and not just the viz, because I always feel the creators are just as interesting as the data visualizations they make. So here we yeah. go. Here's, here's question number one. Um, I, I, pie charts, do you love or loathe them? Um, I'm going to use an Andy Cockgrieve answer here, and mm-hmm. it depends. <laughs> mm, yeah. um, if you have less than three or less than probably four slices, mm-hmm. I would potentially use them if it's yeah. my last option. Um, mm-hmm. I do prefer donuts, even though they're like even worse than pie tarts, but <laughs> they look a little bit nicer. Mm. Okay. But yeah, they wouldn't be my first choice. No, that's fair enough. I, I, that that it depends answer comes up quite a bit on this podcast, which I think is a good thing. Uh, to have blind hate of any particular chart isn't isn't ideal because it can serve a purpose. But I, from what I can tell, and based on your response to those those purposes or times to use them are quite rare. So um, yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, I always feel they get an unfair rep, but um, yeah, like what you just said, it's time and place. 
That's, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Literally yeah. a time and a place. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, just not that often. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, next question. Um, oh, so what publications for DataViz do you regularly follow? Um, so I don't really follow that many, um, but I, when I'm trying to look for inspiration, I generally search the topic on Pinterest. Oh. Um, so I search for like the topic and then put infographic at the end of it and then mm -hmm. just scroll through them um, and get lots of inspiration. Um, and I have a whole database folder on my Pinterest. Oh, um, wow. But other than that, it's just looking through Tableau Public um, and just finding people that um, have created great visits. Um, but there's a hashtag on um, Twitter called Dig This Viz. Oh, okay. Um, so there's quite a few people that do use it, and um, I reference it quite a lot. So if I really like someone's visualization, and, or that I think that it's got a great story, or it looks really, really nice and clean, mm. then I just retweet it with a hashtag dig this fizz. So people could use that to search for specific fizzes or or something just to give them a bit more inspiration. Oh, amazing. No, I haven't heard those two suggested before, so I'm definitely going to adopt those. Um, oh yeah, Pinterest, never thought of that, but that's that's a great idea. And uh, I guess had the hashtag one's pretty cool because it's like a nominated good visits, not just people going, look at me, look at me. It's other people going, that's that's yeah. worth a look, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, I don't think anyone's used it on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, other people tend to promote other <clears throat> people's work um, by using the Dig This Viz. So I am tracking the hashtag via... Um, google sheets on mm. using the if this then that formula uh, um yeah. so hopefully like by um i should be able to create something with that so that you can actually link back to the specific viz oh, that's somehow smart. somewhere so now i've got that on evidence that i kind of have to do it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's another project watch this space but, but that's, yeah. that's cool though i'm totally going to start following that hashtag just and also promote good work i see so you might see a few of my submissions in there of other people I submit, not not yeah, me. I don't, yeah. want to, I don't want to be that first person who <laughs> submits himself. Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, <laughs> great. Okay, so that's that's a cool resource. Um, so thank you. Um, so just for um, uh, Tableau newbies, um, what would be your number one trick or tip you'd give to them when they start out? See, this was a difficult one for me because obviously mm. I, I run the Tableau Tip Tuesday and I'm used to giving like long tips. So I trying see. to think of a short tip that <laughs> I can explain, mm. um, it was quite difficult. But um, using the so an in-field calculation, so when you double click on rows or columns, you get to create your own calculation inside mm. that field. Um, I tend to use the average of zero quite a lot. Uh, because oh. it gives you a dummy axis to allow you to plot your text. So if you're using like text headers or mm. you want something that's centered, you could use the average of zero or average of one, depending or minus one, depending on where you want the offset to be. Uh. So if you wanted something to sit on the right, you would use minus one. Mm -hmm. And if it one, if you wanted oh. it on the left, you'd use minus one. So it wow. kind of yeah just the average of minus one zero or one just offsets it ever so slightly for those text labels no that's really smart i never thought about that that's a great tip it's not just for newbies it's for old old dinosaurs <laughs> like me too it's, it's great um perfect and yeah I, I yeah i've got to confess i don't use that enough to double clicking inside the equation it might just be habit of like right mouse click edit but I, it should be something i guess we should look into because it probably speeds up the work stream yeah, but so, then yeah. also if you are using it that calculation quite a lot, it's always handy to drag it from the rows and columns into your measures, and then mm -hmm. it will save that calculation for you um, so that you can reuse it all the time. Oh, that's smart, yeah, because it's kind of a new thing. So you're saying mm -hmm. if you drag that pill back in, it then creates a copy or a it creates a reusable so version. It's very, that, that's really good for when you're doing table calculations. So if you're doing like the percent of total of your sales mm. and you do the quick table calculation on the pill, um, yeah. it will then, if you drag it over to the left-hand side onto your measures, it will yeah. then save that specific calculation and you can look into that calculation to see mm. what that table calc is. Wow. You just blow my mind. That's like, <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. That's amazing. Totally going to mess around with that afterwards too. 
this is great. I, I, I love doing this podcast. I, I mean, it helps others, but it's secretly helping me too. I'm like, oh, bloody, it was cool. Thanks. So thank you. Um, You're great. That's a great tip. So perfect. Um, ah, okay. Here's always a tricky one. Um, what is your favorite chart type? There's, oh, there's lots of charts that I really mm. like, but, um, depending on the data, um, I think a just, a plot is really useful for if you've got lots of points stacked on top of each other mm -hmm. um, with lots of the same values so it allows to see the spread um, of say that specific number so I really like jitter plots okay yeah I'm actually seeing a couple in a uh, in your gallery which is again yeah perfect example showing them in action um but no, that's cool it's um it's i guess it's one of those it depends ones but there are like i guess personal favorites and there that's a good good go-to one i like that yeah um ah okay so you mentioned you've used alteryx um but apart from tableau what other tools do you generally use when you're uh, building a viz um powerpoint <laughs> So okay. PowerPoint is great for, um, because Tableau Public doesn't support as many fonts as we would like, um, mm. PowerPoint is great for creating those key headers or images that you need. So like buttons, for example, uh, PowerPoint yeah. is great at creating buttons. Mm. Um, you can save them as images and then import them into your Tableau repository. So PowerPoint is definitely one of those tools that you need when you're creating a vids. Yeah, this is interesting. You're like the fourth person, like really <laughs> like seasoned veteran tablet user who like has mentioned that. And I think that's cool because it is like a great drawing tool, which you can then just export and put in. Um, I, I've, I've, I've been stuck it into the Adobe suite, but you're, 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 you're like using, using Photoshop and stuff, but your, your solution is way more easy and cheaper. So I'm kind of yeah, kicking so, myself now, yeah. That's a good thing about... Um, PowerPoint is majority of people do have it. So it's mm. a, it's the cheaper option for creating those. Yeah, images. yeah. And, and I guess more people are used to using PowerPoint than they are yeah, Photoshop or some more yeah. advanced graphics thing. So I think that's that's a cool message and inspiring to hear that you guys use that because it's again, it's not this it, it's not in the realms of these elite creative people. It's just you've got the tools literally on your computer most likely to go do the yeah. stuff. So, so the excuses or the barriers are just or even more reduced. So, yeah, um, exactly. No, that's cool. Okay. So I'm, oh, I'm going to have to dig out PowerPoint again, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> join, join the cool kids again. It's uh, it's way quicker. I love it. Okay. Um, ah, okay. So this is always an interesting one. Uh, what was your first version of Tableau? Oh, um, I think it was way back in 8.2 oh okay that's so 2015 mm. i think was the earliest i started using it which was before level of detail calculation <laughs> yes yeah and now i couldn't imagine my life without them yeah, i use them but... all the time <laughs> it's like a dark dark period um yeah yeah well not dark it's just more frustrating because like you knew what you know what you could do when they have them and it's, mm -hmm. it's just great that Tableau finally listened and put them in, made them easy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I like that because it makes people appreciate it. Like, um, I, I just imagine a person who uses Tableau for the first time today, they probably would just take everything for granted. But it's us, yeah. us, us old, old users who are like, oh, in my day, they didn't have non-US yeah, well, it, maps. and Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that um, you should say that. So uh, part of my work, I'm still working on 10.4 and um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm looking at the new features and I'm like, oh man, why can I not <laughs> use the actions? Yeah, why yeah. can't I use Viz and Tooltips? Correctly. Um, oh yeah, Viz and so Tooltips. Yeah, I love that one. 10.5 was Viz and Tooltips. So mm. yeah, um, it's, it's interesting when you don't have it and you know what's available. Yeah, that's probably even worse. You're like, oh, I, I, I can, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I know I can do it. <laughs> Okay, so just out of curiosity, is, is that the, you sometimes using 10.4? Is that just uh, because of your work environment, or do you just like to keep yourself on, you know, keep on your toes, keep yourself on the toes? Uh, or? No, it's definitely not the second option you just said. <laughs> um, yeah. No, 10.4 10 point, 10 is we've had a bit of issues with upgrading, um, so we're mm. just kind of wait. It's the whole TDE to hyper issue, um, uh, yeah. so we're just waiting on an upgrade for that. Um, yeah, I feel your pain. Um, I, I do still keep up to date with the versions because publishing to Tableau Public as well. So yeah, 
it's yeah, that's good. good to keep up to date on them. Totally. So when they do launch a new version, you're like, I got this. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know what yeah, we're doing. I know the features <laughs> yeah that's, that's excellent okay cool cool um ah okay speaking of tableau inversions uh what would be the number one feature you'd like to see tableau implement which they haven't already oh well this is a pet peeve of mine okay. so when you i think it was in 10.2 you could um go to format all workbook and then you could remove the grid lines the axis rulers format all the fonts in hmm. there it would be great if you could have the row and column dividers in there as well because every time i end up turning them all off one hmm. by one on every single sheet oh, and no. it's the biggest bugbear of mine Oh, yeah, that would add up, especially like with the one you just had with multiple, multiple sheets. And yeah. Yeah, wow. I had to remove all of them one by one. Well, um, so, and it's really tricky to know that they could do it because they do it with all the other global yeah. things. So interesting. Is there like a, already a Tableau feature request or can we like make I'm, one and upload I'm it? I'm not sure, actually. I think, hmm. I think I might create one if there's not one. Um, if hmm. not, we can definitely try and find an upvoted version. Yeah, yeah. If let's let's do some digging, and whatever happens, there'll be one down below. Because I, I would probably benefit from that too. Because I do find myself doing that quite regularly. And yeah, uh, yeah, having multiple sheets, I'm just shuddering thinking about trying to do that. On like more than a couple. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather I'd rather them be disabled, and then for me to add them if I want them, hmm. rather than having to remove them all the time. Yeah, that's a good point. Is very rarely I'd like to keep them. So yeah. yeah. Off. it's on the it's on the odd occasion that i do hmm. want them like very yeah. odd so it's the exception not the norm so yeah maybe that's a yeah. behavior they could tweak i think well let's mm -hmm. let's let's try and make that happen let's see <laughs> what uh what uh um oh okay cool um we've actually just reached the end of the questions um you've been really great and efficient and like i guess i've tried to force myself not to ramble a lot <laughs> um <laughs> I, I'll just I'll just stop here. But um, is there anything else you maybe like want to mention, or we, if you're happy to finish early, that's cool too. But um, the, the stage is yours, so we've got about ten minutes left. Is there yeah. Else you want? Um, so <clears throat> anybody who's coming to Berlin for the Tableau TCE conference, mm -hmm. um, there's lots of great sessions that you should definitely be heading to. I'm just going to mm -hmm. do a shameless plug on Workout Wednesday <laughs> after Ironviz on the Wednesday, um, and then also there's a the Tableau Ambassador Meet the Rockstars session, um, which involves myself, Sarah Bartlett, and Simon Beaumont. And um, so we'll have be some doing some Q and A questions there. So if you have any questions for us, then come and meet us there. Amazing. Um, just for those few, uh, for those listeners who aren't familiar, the Tableau Conference Europe. That's uh, when's that coming up? That's soon, right? So that is in. Just over, just under two weeks now, so from the seventeenth to the nineteenth of June, and it is officially sold out. I'm afraid, so ah, unless you okay. have your ticket, then yep. you're not going to be able to go. Oh, but then wow. there's also Vegas, Vegas in November. Yes, no, that, big, that big should one. be fun. And are you going to be at that one? Yes, I'll be there. Um, hopefully, I'll be presenting again, um, and hopefully, there will be another workout Wednesday session. Um, so oh. we'll we'll definitely be there. Exciting! Um, well, I hope there is. It'd be a shame if there wasn't. Um, I know I'd be surprised too. So yeah, I'll be at that one too. So we'll have to uh, say hi in person. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. <laughs> be cool. I'm easy to spot. I'm six foot eight. It's hard to tell when I'm sitting oh. down. So just look for the super tall guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will do. Excellent. Okay, so that's cool. So yeah, anyone who's going to be at TCE 2019, mm -hmm. uh, make sure you. Uh, go to Lorna sessions and the workout Wednesdays. I'd be, yeah, you'll be, you won't regret it. It'll be really valuable. Okay, great. Um, hmm. Anything else, or should we just? Uh, um, no, I think no. I think that's everything. Thank okay. you for having me on. It's been great to chat to you. Yeah, no, great having you on too. Um, thank you so much for your time. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Thanks for listening, and be sure to check out the show notes for everything we've covered today. And if you're new to the podcast, consider subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And also visit datasaurus-rex.com forward slash welcome to see all the other data visualization content we have to help you out. Till next time.
Thank you very much.